Okay, welcome to the Swing Trading Life Cycles channel. We're we're doing some live uh, sort of uh, you know live action here for the broader market, so a little bit rare. And I'll, I'll try to do more of these as time allows. Um, so I'm recording this at 8:45, so 15 minutes after the CPI announcement on November 10th. So this is a setup for sort of shorter term, uh, shorter term view. So upper left hand corner, I'll take the crosshairs off. One second. Upper left hand corner is weekly. This middle here is the hourly. Here is the 15 minute. You know, this is kind of going clockwise. This I kind of use as a wild card. Right now it's the one minute chart. This is the eight hour and this is the daily. So one way to think about this is you're looking at the eight hour and the one hour, like like one above the other. And then you're also looking at the weekly and the daily. The weekly obviously moves the least amount, but you'll see, and we'll, we'll, look, we'll look at why it is helpful to have that right in full view. So we will zoom in to the one minute chart since we obviously just reported that number and we're, like, we had a pretty violent reaction. Now that was the minute of 8.30, right? We got this big move from 37.51 to 38.61. So literally a hundred point move. And now, and then we consolidated for a couple of minutes. We came up, this is your higher low. Now we're trying to, so just kind of quick risk management here, you know, 38.59, 38.60 kind of area is your first, that you would want that to hold on any, on any pullbacks, right? Another way to think about that is a pullback to that zone could be a buy, right? depending on your risk reward tolerance, right? And I'll, and I'll zoom out, but you can imagine this move is going to, should make it to at least back to 39.20, that area. So, you know, that's about, that's more than 50 points from here. So you have to start to think about, you know, what is your risk reward? You know, is it four to one? Is it five to one, three to one, whatever, what have you. Right now we are, we are starting a little uptrend. The thing is these CPI numbers tend to, you know, involve traps. Now, this is literally a 100-point rally. And, of course, it dipped below the lows. It swept all these lows here. Just to be clear, this is a bullish outside one-minute candle. Like, that's the point of this multiple time frame analysis. It works on all the time frames. And it's helpful to zoom in. Well, look, look, look. We're Again, so we're probably going to be on here for the next, let's say, 10 minutes. So we're going to watch everything unfold. Look at this. This is we're seeing in real time. That's a reversal on the one minute chart, right? We're zoomed in here, zoomed in. And to be more clear, this is actually a bearish outside candle right now because it went below the low, went above the high, and now it's red. But it's also a doji. So we're not getting that downside move. I mean, you saw we had even these little red candles. Usually the one minute chart is, I mean, you say not necessarily meaningless because obviously many minutes add up to hours, etc. But in the minutes after the announcement, so now we're at minute 19, every candle counts to some degree, right? Like these candles were important because that was a retracement. These candles were important were important because that was more or less just consolidation, right? And so now we're kind of building some downside here. This is interesting. Uh, this is consolidation right now. My sense is, my, my expectation would be this continues to resolve higher. And this little candle here is super helpful. Why? because that's another risk point, right? Depending on how this rally develops, you now have that level. Again, depending on what your risk reward is, how conservative you want to be, you can use that 39.69 level. And we're now at 38.75, excuse me, the 38.65 level. So that's how you can kind of walk up a stop, right? Like, so now we're starting to resolve higher, right? And so and that, that's that's the one minute chart. And of course, we're at, so we're at 19 minutes from the move. So let's look at the 15 minute chart, right? So we have one big candle. And again, that's part of the reason why I wanted to do this sort of special video, because think about that. That big one minute candle is essentially dominating the 15 minute candle, right? The candle that opened at 8.30 and closed at 8.45, right? That one minute of price action is doing everything. It is kind of creating this whole 15 minute candle, because as we, as we were looking, a lot of the rest of that was consolidation. And so... We now have another 15-minute candle closing. It will close in exactly 10 minutes. It's 8.50 now. Right now, it's just consolidating at the upper end of the range. So those are all, not to belabor the point, 
But those were all the little one minute candles we were seeing, right? Obviously, you add up 15 of those, and that gives you a 15 minute candle. Now, look, we're approaching a risk point, right? Now, this will often happen. This is a this is a this is this is why you want to be, and this just takes experience and trial and error. You put your stops too tight, like like right, like you wouldn't want to put your stop exactly at the low. You want to give it some room, but again, that has to be calibrated with the potential upside. So. So that's your 15 minute candle where, you know, in 10 minutes, we're going to get a close here. And unless something crazy happens, this is going to close worst case scenario at the upper end of the range. Best case scenario will actually, this candle will fill out in the next nine minutes and go green, right? But it's probably not going to plunge a hundred points. That's an important thing to kind of to think about. Now, obviously it would have been wonderful to catch the hundred point move. But you can use that to your advantage as you think about demand zones, right? Um, and if we look at the hourly chart, again, that one minute candle is doing all of this. We basically had this, I mean, look at this cascade lower yesterday. And then overnight, we just bear flat. Like this, it, like if you, looked, if you looked in a textbook on technical analysis, when you looked up bear flag, you get something that looked like this. This looks like this, this is a textbook bear flat in real time. And then the hour of the CPI number, and then we dip below it, we clear out these lows. It's like, oh, okay, this thing is breaking down. No, it's not. I mean, look at that candle. We also took out this high, which I hope you're seeing this. Again, this is the multiple time frame analysis in action. It works on all of the time frames, not just some of them, all of them. The principles are the same, folks. This is a swing high, right? This swing high caused, like, we, we got this move down. It looked like we were going to really break down, but we bounced back up. But it was really just consolidation to take us lower. And then you imagine, okay, this is more consolidation to take us lower. And this is, and this is, and then this is like, nope, not the case. Now, any move can be reversed, to be clear. So it's not to say that this is invulnerable, right? This thing can absolutely be broken, but... If you look at these two big candles, again, this is the hourly chart. This candle has kind of made up a lot of that distance. So that that's actually so. All that to say, we would need an incredibly violent bearish reversal, which again could happen. But you're always thinking about odds. Now, what we are going to see is consolidation. We're going to see chop, and again, that's why it's important to understand those levels with precision. Like you see, this is again going back to our one minute chart. We're just kind of consolidating on that line. That's not a coincidence, right? It makes sense. That's where price kind of stopped before, right? This area, like it looked like it was going to break down and then stop. So it's not a coincidence that we're like, we're working that zone. I wouldn't say not, not, not down to the tick, but like, we're just kind of working a zone right now. Right. And so that's going to be, inter that, that's going to be important. If we can, if we do bounce off of this 3870 area, that tells you we're probably going to the 3920s, right? So that's another 50 points up. Again, one could pick pick their risk reward pretty easily from there. You kind of do the math depending on what one is comfortable with. And if we look at the eight hour chart, again, that big hourly candle has done this to the eight hour chart. Really nice, right? Because the eight hour chart wasn't looking great either. We had this, the same way we had that hourly chart, that bear flag. This was essentially starting to look like a, eight hour bear flag of this move down. But then we got this and we got this spillover. I was like, okay, it's really starting in earnest. And then look at this. We had a little inside eight hour candle. That was the candle. Um, so this candle is about to close to be clear. To, that's important as well. So this candle actually closes at 11 uh, a.m. Eastern, right? So it's got, um, wait, is that right? No, sorry. This candle, that's right. This candle closes at 10, at 10 a.m. Eastern. So we're going to get another eight hour candle and that's going to be an important signal because we're going to want to see if that continues a, a higher high. But we've already taken out all of this down move. Right. And we made this higher high above that. So the eight hour, again, is just an easier, cleaner way to see what we were seeing on that um, one hour chart. And you expect we're going to try to take out this area. Right. Like that swing high the same way we're going to attack that swing high on the hourly. If we continue to get bullishness, it cascades higher and we should take it out on the eight hour. And then, of course, all of this adds up to a big move on the daily. We're already there. Important. I'll take out some of these lines. Um, these are from previous um, just previous analysis. But just to be really clear here, 
that's a swing low. More importantly, it's a higher swing low. What is that? What do I mean by that? I mean it's a higher low, right? A higher swing low. We already have a swing low, and this is your. These are the future. This is the future. So, for the other, my other content, I, I give you the S and P um, cash. So the levels are going to be different. But we have this swing low here. Once we went above, what was that level? Thirty-seven eighty-two fifty. This candle did that, and then this candle followed through, and then this candle also followed through. I'll zoom in, right? You can see these candles are making higher highs, and then this candle, uh-oh, yesterday, that's not good. We made a lower low, which is to say, to be very crystal clear, this became a swing high, right? Once we went below this low, once this candle went below this low, this became a swing high. And you were like, uh-oh, are we continuing lower? And just so you see that, those bear flags that we talked about, like that bear flag on the eight-hour chart, you could, like you could see this could have been that on the daily chart, right? And this was the beginning of your potential spillover. Like, you can, like I hope you can kind of see that visually, right? So, like, we made this move up like that, that, and then that. That was your warning, right? Because we made a lower low below this. And then we did this, and then we did that, right? Think about that in real time. That is a lower high to this, and we already have a lower low. Like, think about that. Like, that's really important. We made a lower low here below this, and then what's the next thing that we did? We made a lower high below this one. But now we're getting this violent reversal, which is to say this is becoming something of a false breakdown you can kind of think of. All of this sets up some near-term <laughs> bullish action. Um, clearly, we're moving higher again, unless we got some kind of violent bearish reversal. And if you finally look at what this does to the weekly, right, and that would be your ultimate target. It looks like we're heading there. Uh, again, we're heading, I should say, we're heading there unless we get some kind of violent bearish reversal. So I'd say, you know, maybe the 39.35 area, maybe 39.50 even. So basically at least test this area to try to make a new high on the weekly chart. So, and to be clear right now, this is just an inside week, right? Because we haven't made a higher high or a higher low, but we're obviously much closer to making a higher high. Looks like we're trying to make a move to that 39, 35 area. So that is a reasonable target with, you know, proper risk reward set, obviously. And so I will take a quick look at just um, some of the other sort of asset classes just really quickly, see how they reacted initially. And, and to be clear, we're just 30 minutes off from the move and this thing is known for sort of trapping. So we want to be like, we're, it, there's a lot of trading to happen today, but the principles are the same. You can pull up a chart and see that, right? You can, now if we do get a dip, you know, because we had a hundred point rally, you could easily see we get a dip of like 20, 30, 35 points even, you know, give back 30% of the rally. Um, that's where things start to get a little bit more complex, but you can use those same principles for sure in real time to understand what are those pivots that we need to get above. I'll, while that other chart is loading, I'll just flash back to the, to the one minute chart. Just keep ourselves grounded. Look at that, right? What did we do? We bounced off that level and we're moving higher. So now at 37.80, excuse me, 3878, you could definitely set a stop in like the 3865 area. Because once if we because this line here is right around 3868. So if we were to dip to 3865, well, we're probably going to 3859, right? Like you could even so again, it depends on how much room you want to get it. But if you're thinking 3935, that's 55 points from 3880. So you can kind of think about like what you're willing to sort of risk from there. And and you can always get back in a trade if something if you get stopped out and then it re-triggers. Let's see, did that load? No, it did not. There we go. Just want to look at a smattering of some of the other things here. So this is the these are this is gold. So we talked about this in that last uh, video. This idea that maybe this was just gonna become something like this, your little consolidation. And I mean, man, that's a nice little move. That's gold. That's silver continuing to move higher. The dollar continuing its downtrend. These are all daily charts. Um, this is the Russell kind of randomly. Um, let's change this to oil, actually. So oil is 
not nearly as strong as anything else. It's actually kind of dojiing out. Let's look at an hourly chart on these guys. Okay, right. So gold was bull flagging and now it's breaking out. Same exact thing for silver. Again, now we watch the levels inside. So this is good. We're getting an inside one hour candle on gold and silver. So it gives us pretty clear levels. And man, look at that dollar. That moved lower and now consolidating. Again, aka a bear flag. And then you have oil, a pop higher. Now it's consolidating inside. So that's helpful because as things consolidate, it kind of gives you a chance to catch your breath and get a sense of the levels. Uh, so there's a lot of trading to happen later, and I'll certainly post on Twitter. Um, but wanted to share this just kind of special uh, sort of format, if you will. So this was about 15 minutes. We'll just flash back to that one minute candle uh, chart again. And now we're starting to move. Like, so we're losing a little bit of steam. And again, this whole thing becomes, you know, a kind of bull flag consolidation. You don't even have to call it a quote unquote bull flag. It's consolidation. Like, you know that. And if we look at the 15 minute chart, that 15 minute candle just closed. And you can see it made a higher high, but kind of feeble because we pulled back, had that wick. And now we have a little inside 15 minute candle. And so, you know, just to illustrate the point, you now have another place to another area to start to think about. Like, or I should say it's the same area, 3868, that kind of area, because that's where your 15 minute candle closed. Again, you would kind of you would kind of hope that you kind of expect, I should say, that this stays within the upper end. The problem is this is such a big move that you could easily dip down into these areas again. That's where you start to look at, you know, different time frames to kind of get a sense of like your support areas, like maybe a move down to 3848, right? Like you can see there was a lot of activity in that area, right? 3840, 3845. You could easily see a dip down there. Um, it's going to be complex trading, it's, it's like especially like if you didn't catch this 100 point move, which you could have, but that would have been a gamble, right? You're sort of a coin toss. The numbers did. And notice I didn't even talk about what the numbers were. They came out, you know, I mean, I guess it's obvious you would assume, right? They came out uh, less hot than expected, but still not great, right? In absolute terms, not good at all, really. So that's going to be an important level to kind of watch and, and potentially a level to kind of get in to then play the move to 39, 35, right? That would be nice because that gives you another 100 point sort of move. And again, this one is hard to catch um, unless, you know, it just literally you had a one minute candle that moved 100 points, right? So that's a that's binary. But it's helpful to see that because I say this is the most volatile trading that you'll see. And so if you can understand this, you can really get a handle on all trading. So that is all for today. I hope you found this useful. I'll definitely do more of these if, if folks find it useful. Um, definitely open to feedback in the comments. Thank you.